I own seven tripods, so naturally I'm using my cup of coffee to hold the camera up today. It only makes sense, right? It only makes sense. Hey, what's up? I'm Allie, and welcome back to my channel. Anyone who knows me knows that I am a really big audiobook reader. That's basically how I do the majority of my reading. Yes, audiobooks are reading. I will take no arguments. I really love using audiobooks for is like doing things just around the house. And I listen to audiobooks like every time I clean my house, every time I'm doing dishes, like things like that. But I also love listening to audiobooks when I'm doing like really big, not really big, but bigger projects essentially, which to me is mostly painting something. <laughs> I just can't help myself. I have to paint things all the time. But, um, and like doing deep cleanings or like cleaning out my closet and getting rid of stuff like that. Or just, you know, just bigger projects that, that take more time that you could essentially kind of listen to a audiobook within a, at least the majority of an audiobook while you're doing the project. So I feel like there's a lot of people, I watch a lot of DIY and home decor channels and a lot of them talk about Audible and whatnot to listen to audiobooks while they do projects as well and I thought why don't I tell you about the things that I've listened to while I've done my projects and whether or not I recommend them, why they worked, maybe why they didn't, and if they didn't work what I would recommend instead. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I don't even know what to call this. Like this is, it's kind of a recommendations, it's kind of telling you things that I've read. So it's a little, there, we're going to be a little I don't know. I don't know. Is there an audience for? I don't even know if there's an audience for this type of thing. So quickly, if you are looking for audiobooks, I personally don't really use Audible. Some great alternatives. Scribd is my all-time favorite service, honestly, and it's about ten dollars a month. But and it is unlimited. I know some people have complaints about that, but there's so many titles on there that I never even notice. If something like ends up being unavailable they can only buy so many rights you know if you use someone's referral code you get two months free and they also get a month free that you can try out and honestly I just love the selection I love the price I think it is amazing um, if you have a local library that has Hoopla Hoopla is another really great source for audiobooks and then also Libro.fm is another one that I really love using because it is the same price as Audible however you are actually buying from like your local book store you can pick a local bookstore you can pick um a, a just a small owned business you can pick a small owned bookstore and choose those and that's who the profits go all go to you're actually supporting like your local stores as you do it so um those are the the three big ones that i use all the time you're also going to need some headphones honestly i have tried so many headphones and i do just want to quickly talk about Studio. They are not like a sponsor of this video. These are just headphones that I really really enjoyed and I actually had reached out to them and was like Can I get like a discount code or something because I want to talk about your headphones And I would like to have that for people and they actually ended up sending me their new I believe it's called the Neo and they they kind of look like AirPods, which I like um, they fit really snug in the ears. You have different things that you can put on it to make them more snug or loose, whatever your fit is. They also have like touch capabilities. So if you touch them a certain way, like they'll pause or they'll speed up or rewind and things like that. And um, these are my absolute favorite. I have another pair from them that I enjoy. The quality is fantastic. The price, I feel like you can't beat for the quality that you're getting. And these are so handy. Again, they have like a charging case with them. Honestly, I really recommend them. I wore these on a six hour flight and they were just so comfortable. I didn't even notice them. And I, I take them every day. I take them to work. I take them on walks. And they are just like, they come in a variety of colors that are really fun. They are my new favorite headphones. So um, yeah, I just wanted to quickly talk about them. If you're looking for kind of a cheaper high end headset, headphone, earphone, whatever, they, I really like these. I really, really enjoy them. So anyway, let's talk about the actual books now. First of all, let's go in the order of which I've done things. Again, most of my big projects are painting <laughs> projects. The very first big project I took on in this house. This is all things that I've done within the house that I currently own. And the first thing I ever took on was painting my shelves so after they were put in they were just basic 
wood because they're just made up out of like two by fours. <laughs> And the first thing that I did was I had to paint them. I wanted them white. I didn't want them plain wood. Um, I didn't want to stain them. I just wanted them to be white. So the that was the first project I ever took on. And during that time, I read An Unkindness of Magicians. This was my first introductory into Cat Howard, who is now one of my all-time favorite authors. This is a modern fantasy, and we follow kind of this society of which is in wizards kind of thing in a, a city and they have these houses and there's this tournament that's coming up and each house has to provide a kind of person that's going to go compete in this tournament however there's also like a murder mystery going on there's someone who's like a kind of serial killer-esque and they're trying to hunt down who that is there's also kind of this like weird crime jail system and we follow a character who is trying to like get out of that and there's several characters so this book, I will say, is absolutely fantastic. Is it the book to listen to while you're doing a project, though? No. <laughs> and I know this is like a recommendations video. Let's start off strong with one I don't recommend. This is a much more complex kind of world. There's a lot of magic happening. There's a lot of characters to follow. I had a list, so I had to stop painting and write a list of who the characters were and kind of how they played into what and who was related to who and things like that. So is this the best to listen to when you're not the most engaged in it? No. Um, I think that the thing with audiobooks when you're doing a project is you want something that isn't going to be super focus attentive if you miss a few things, like, you'll be good kind of deal is more uh, so of what you want. And this is just, like, you can't miss any details in this. So, instead, I would recommend buy the same author so you get, still get that absolutely fantastic writing and those mystical and magical and eerie kind of feelings. Roses and Rot. Again, by the same author, Cat Howard, absolutely fantastic. And this is more of a dark academia. This girl and her sister get into this very prestigious art school. And basically it's like, um, whoever gets picked, only one person gets picked, like something amazing happens. And I did not know that, uh, and I didn't read the synopsis apparently, but this also involves the Fae and how they play into that. And this one isn't as intensive. There isn't as many details to follow, but it's still that same very atmospheric tension grabbing kind of story that you can listen to and be engrossed in, but still be doing something else. And I, I just really recommend that one. The project from there was probably painting. I redid my entryway hallway. Gray, it was dark. We ended up replacing the door and our new door didn't have a window and so it was just a really dark space and I really wanted to brighten it up so I went with kind of an off-white color, a little a more warm toned and then also did this like green and then I took, the, I had to take the color all the way up the stairs and this took so long because it doesn't look like a big space but we have, we seem to have more steps than like anyone else in the world. I don't understand why we have so many steps in our house. So this just took, I'm not even done the project so I'll have so I'll have to find something else to listen to. But when I listened to this, because it was such a big project, I ended up listening to like a book and a half. And I listened to a series, and that is A Blade So Black. I'm not too sure what the actual series is called, but A Blade So Back Black is the first one. And this is a modern Alice in Wonderland retelling, and it is fan fantastic. We follow this girl who realizes she can see these monsters that come from Wonderland and just takes her in and has to train her as this monster slayer of Wonderland and keep the monsters from seeping into the real world as we know it. Um, things go awry though when something happens in Wonderland that threatens her life, her friends, and her family. And so we are following her. She's kind of like, I don't want to do this monster hunting thing. Like, my mom is very worried about me. I'm all that my mom has. It also talks a lot about, like, um, issues in society with police brutality and also just young black people being murdered and stuff like that. So it does talk about that, but also with the fantasy element. And I just, you know, I love anything that takes place in Wonderland because Wonderland can be whatever the author wants to make it. There are like no set rules for Wonderland. So that's what I love. I will say though, given that this is in Wonderland, I don't think you have to pay 
super hard attention to details because again, Wonderland is something that you know and just makes sense. And this does take place, the first one takes place in the more modern world. The second one is, does take place more in Wonderland. But the characters are amazing. The, it's it's funny. It's, it's just so, it's action-packed, you know, takes you into that world. But also it's enough that, like, you doll out the boring parts of painting and get to listen to this. And it's absolutely fantastic. So I would say this is... A great pick. I think, you know, it is just enough to keep you entertained without spacing out from the story, but but it does help you space out from the tedious tasks that you're doing. But I do think that it is also not super intensive that if you miss something, you're not going to miss like a very big part of the plot. The next one is I took on this pretty big big thing of cleaning out our garage. It kind of became this drop all space and it was a hot mess and I finally just was like I need to just go through the stuff, put things in where they need to go and it was just, it was probably the most like labor intensive thing that I've done which you know you wouldn't think cleaning out your garage would be but it was and during this I decided to listen to A Song of Achilles which is hands down one of the best books ever written. It is absolutely beautiful. The writing is so poetic. The characters, oh, you can't help but just love the characters. And um, this is going to be a, a, a reenactment because I don't have footage of me cleaning out my garage of what, it, what was me listening to this. <laughs> so yeah, this is a mythology kind of retelling and of course we do follow Achilles but this is more from Patroclus, his side of the story and how he meets Achilles and what ha the adventures that they go on and and you know <laughs> it's just so good it's so good here's the thing though I would not recommend listening to this while you are trying to do something especially if that something means that you have to be like looking at something, thinking about something, and making a decision about something. It's not a mythology complex world. So I would not, I honestly wouldn't recommend this for any project that you're doing. I would say if you would listen to this, this is something that you just need to sit down and absorb if you do. So instead, I'm going to recommend a book that has absolutely nothing in common except for the fact that it will make you cry at the end. <laughs> and that is City of Girls. This is such a good pick because this does take place in a world that we know. This follows a young woman who goes to live in her aunt's theater for the summer and she ends up falling in love with the theater and the and the girls that live there and just the life in the city. She's kind of been sheltered and she loves city life and it is about her just like exploring um, sex and exploring the things that she wants to do with her life and being independent and being a strong-willed woman and just things like that but there is also a character who has written to her and been like um, my father you know passed away how uh, well, how do you know my father like you've come up and how do you know my father I'm highly concerned and so we are getting the letter back from our main character explaining how she knows the other character's father and oh it is so good not enough people talk about this book it is not super obviously you don't have, there's not a world there's not world building the only thing you really are following is this character and her life and it's very much things that like other people go through so it's not anything that like again if you miss something you're not going to like miss the overall main point of the plot or anything super important, but it is still so extremely entertaining enough that it keeps your attention and it is just beautiful. An absolutely beautiful story. Again, I don't think people talk about it. It is in one of my top five books of absolutely all time. The only other thing it has in common with the Song of Achilles. That is probably like one of my top picks for a book to listen to while you are doing things because it is immersive enough but also like familiar enough that it, you feel comfortable just kind of listening to it. It's like someone literally telling you just a story while you're doing things. It is absolutely fantastic. Project where I decided I was going to redo my library and I painted everything. It wasn't just the shelves. I painted everything in here white and it ended up being uh, a pretty big project and I listened to a whole audiobook and watched 
binge watch like a whole season of a show while I did it. And so the one that I ended up listening to was, if I'm being honest, and this is a YA kind of romance contemporary, which are always honestly the best to listen to. I'm just so good. Um, but this one follows a girl who is known as the bitch around school and she has a crush on this guy, but he's like, no, you're a bitch. So she decides that in order to get her crush to like her, she needs to kind of tame herself. This is a taming of the shrew retelling. And so she has to tame herself and she's going to start with a guy that she has wronged the most. And this guy's name is uh, Brendan. And so she is like, she's going to go to him and try to make amends. But he's not going to make it easy. He's going to make her work for it. And so, of course, they spend more and more time together. And as she is trying to impress her crush, is is her crush, you know, is it moving on to someone else? Honestly, it's absolutely fantastic. I love this one so very much. It is so much fun. I love a good bitch in high, I love following the bitch in the high school. I love it. I don't know what it is. I just love it. And I love, um, you know, this is kind of a dislike to love kind of romance, which again is another one that I, I, I just really like that trope. This one is really fun. I think that this is absolutely perfect to listen to while you are doing something because it again, it is a familiar setting. So it's not something that you really have to build in your mind. It's already there. You already can picture things. And the banter is just really fun to listen to. You can imagine being there with these characters. It's just a really good story to listen to. And then the very last one is one that I did recently. I took on uh, just a small smaller task of painting my garage so I picked a shorter audiobook for this and this is the last final girls this one is fantastic it is a satire of slasher films so it takes a lot of kind of these tropes from slasher films and just kind of makes fun of them and turns it into a story and it is written out like it is kind of like a script or a movie script of some sort and whenever you listen to it it's awesome because it's like in transitions to the scene of and this scene of and you can just really see it it's like a movie in your head but because these are such well-known tropes like I'm not a big slasher girl but I knew exactly what was happening within the book and I could picture these things and I could picture these are these archetypes of these characters and whatnot these stereotypes so this one's good because it is so familiar even if you don't know slasher films like it is so familiar so you don't have to think overly hard about it you don't have to picture anything super extensively you already know these characters you already know this story kind of deal and it is perfect because it is still so extremely entertaining but also humorous and so it just made a really mundane task seem fun and the whole time i'm like picturing this this movie in my head as i'm doing my things so so two that i just want to quickly mention because i feel like uh, i did not talk about enough kind of mystery thrillers and i think that again they are the best ones to listen to two that i just want to quickly mention that are absolutely fantastic sadie this is a ya mystery and this one's really great to listen to because it has a podcast aspect we follow sadie's perspective as she is hunting down her sister's murderer and trying to get revenge and then we also follow follow a podcast which is following sadie's disappearance and this one is one of the best audiobooks I've listened to. And this one is a Turn of the Key. This one is a Turn of the Screw retelling for anyone who uh, really liked The Haunting of Bly Manor. That was, that was the one, right? And so this is about a woman who is going to become a nanny and she goes to this house she kind of she's like this job just seems too good to be true. She shows up to this house and she's like I don't really understand. One of the children is found dead. We already know from the beginning of the story that she is in prison and she is trying to write a letter to this lawyer and explain like she is innocent and there is something weird as fuck happening in this house and she does not she is like a ghost. <laughs> has to be a ghost so she's gonna try to convince this lawyer that like a ghost has killed this this kid and you know that's just not going to happen the house also has a very dark history anyway it is absolutely fantastic one of my favorite audiobooks the audiobook is fantastic because um the 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 narrator just does a really fantastic job just making like these creepy noises and stuff and just really building on the atmosphere so those are all the audiobooks that I have to recommend. I am constantly doing things so I'm sure I'll have something similar to this um, by next year. Let me know 
some of the audiobooks that you have listened to while you've been doing things. I would love to know some of your favorites and things that just, you know, make it easy to get shit done. Should that, is that what I title this? Audiobooks to listen to when you're getting shit done? If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to see future videos from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!